Hi students, this is Ms. Tomorrow, and today we're going to talk about word problems and using matrices to solve word problems. So some of these word problems you might have seen in Algebra 1, but we're going to use matrices to solve them. So taking a look at the first example, we have a computer manufacturing company which set out sh three shipments. The first order had a bill of 114000 was for four Model 2s, six Model 6s, and ten Model 9s. The second had eight Model 2s, three Model 6s, and five Model 9s, and that bill was 72000 In the third shipment, we have 81000 we have two Model 2s, nine Model 6s, and five Model 9s. So we want to know how much the manufacturer charges for Model 6 computers. So we're going to kind of set up um, a set of system of equations, and the total is always going to go last. So we have, let's see, x, we're going to have model 2. We'll do y is model 6. And then z will have b model 9. Okay, so my first one, I have 4x plus 6y plus 10z, and the total bill was 114,000. And then we have 8x plus 3y plus 5z, and that was 72,000. And then our last one, we have 2x plus 9y plus 5z again, and that was for 81,000. Okay, so that's our first step. So we get points for doing that. Our second step is to actually write it in matrix form. So now that we, knew, we know how to use RREF, that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to do everything that goes in your calculator goes on your paper. So we're going to do RREF. And we have 4, we're going to use our coefficients, 4, 6, 10, 114,000. We got 8. 3, 5, and 72,000, and 2, 9, 5, 81,000. So we're going to type in the calculator just like that. So I'm going to pull up my calculator, menu, matrices. Um, we're going to pick RREF, which is number 5 first, and then we're going to do create a matrix. And this is three by four, so three rows and four columns. Okay. Remember, tab brings you to the next box. Oops. And then this will give us our answer. Remember, when we do RREF, you should have basically the identity matrix, and then the last column should have numbers, which are going to be our answers. So again, anything you type in the calculator goes on your paper. Okay, so I'm going to copy that down. So let me move my calculator over. If you don't get the identity matrix, that means somewhere you made a mistake. So the 1x is the 2,500, the 1y one is 4,000, and the 1z is 8,000. So we're going to write down what we got, and then we actually have to, to answer the question. So we want to know model 6, what do they charge? Model 6 was y, so y is they charge 4,000. Okay, let's take a look at question 2. We have an investor which has a total of $18,000 and it's deposited into three different accounts. So we have annual interest rates of 9%, 7%, and 5%. The amount deposited in the 9% account is twice the amount of the 5% account. The three accounts earn a total annual interest of 1340 How much money is deposited in each account? Okay. So the first thing is, we kind of want to look and see, we got x, y, z, so I'm going to have x be the 9%, y the 7%, and z the 5% account. Okay, the other piece of information 
it says the 9% is twice the 5%. So x equals 2z. Okay, so we want to write our system of equations. So the first thing is we have $18,000 in the three different accounts. So that's going to be x plus y plus z is going to equal the 18,000. Okay, so the second equation is actually the one I put over here, but we want to get it equal to zero. So if I did, I would have x, I would have zero y, and then if I subtract the 2z over, it'd be negative 2z, and that equals zero. Now, the last equation, since we're talking about percents, we actually have to put our percents in because it says the three accounts earn an annual interest rate of $1,340. So if that's the interest, that's using the percents. So 9% is 0.09x, 7% is 0.07y, and then 0.05z. And that adds up to 1,340. Okay, so now we're going to write that as an REF. So we got 1, 1, 1, 18,000. Then we got 1, 0, negative 2, and 0. And then 0 0.09, 0 0.07, 0 0.05, and that's 1,340. So when you're doing the percentage questions, usually there's a total amount of money, which is going to just be your X, Y, Z. Um, and then any money that talks about the interest, you got to actually put the percents in. Okay. So, like I said before, we're going to pull up our calculator. We're going to do REF first. And then we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to create a matrix. And this is 3 by 4. Okay, and we're going to put everything in. And again, you should always get the identity matrix. A clue that you did something wrong is when you don't get the identity matrix. So we're putting all our coefficients in. Sometimes it's just a matter of maybe you type the number in wrong. And then my interest. Okay. Anything that comes out in the calculator, we're going to also write down. So I need to show my identity matrix. So let's see. The X account was 8,000. The Y was 6,000. And the Z was 4,000. Okay. So let's go back. How much money was deposited in each account? So X is 8,000. The Y is in the middle, which was 6,000. And the Z was 4,000. So that's how much was deposited originally. Okay, last type of question. We're going to go with some money. Total value of nickels, dimes, and quarters in a coin bank is $4. The nickels... If the nickels were dimes and the dimes were nickels, the total value of the co coins would be $3.75. If the quarters were dimes and the dimes were quarters, the total value would be $6.25. Okay, so this is a little confusing. I'm going to use N for nickels. And D for dimes. And Q for quarters. Okay, so the first thing is how much money do I have in the bank? So, nickels, we got 0.05 on. So, we're going to put the value with our variables. 25 cents is Q, and the total amount of money is $4. So, that's our first equation. Okay. Second part, if the nickels were dimes and the dimes were nickels, my total would be 375. So what does that mean? That means I'm going to switch values. If the nickels were dimes, they'd be 10 cents. 
And if the dimes were nickels, they'd be five cents. And the quarters obviously are going to stay the same because it didn't say anything about the quarters. Okay, so now the last one said, I'm going to switch the value of the quarters and the dimes. So the nickels is going to stay the same. But now the dimes are going to be worth 25 cents and the quarters would be worth 10 cents. And that total would be 625. Okay, so again, we want to know how many of each we have. So R R E F and a 0 0 0.5, 0 0.10, 0 0.25, and 4. So we're putting all our coefficients. Okay, through the magic of video, it's already typed in for me on my calculator. And it looks like we have five nickels. So our nickels was five, I'm sorry, 15 nickels, 20 dimes, and five quarters. So obviously, I would write down what's on my screen on my paper to get full credit, and then I would list how much I have of each. Okay, you're going to try the next three questions. I put the answers there so you can check them once you're done. So for number four, we have cots, blankets, and lanterns. Blankets cost 25, cots are 75, lanterns are 50. The 9% account should have 5,250. 6% should be 5,875. 4% should be 3,875. And then the last, number six, you should have 10 nickels, five dimes, and four quarters. So that way you can check your answer and you know you did it right.